Hi everyone, and welcome to Inside Archaeology, the channel taking you inside the exciting field that aims to understand the mysteries of our past. I'm your host, Rachel, an actual archaeologist, and I'm here to tell you that there's a lot of confusion about what archaeologists actually do. From questions about finding treasure and dinosaurs to how we identify objects or find ancient sites, I've got 10 of the most common misconceptions myself and my colleagues come across when you tell someone you're an archaeologist. Continue watching this video to find out what they are, why they're wrong, and don't forget to subscribe, share, like, or give a Ko-fi donation or super thanks to support the channel. This tells the algorithm that people are interested in learning about real archaeology. All right, everyone, let's dig in. First on our list is the idea that archaeologists only dig for treasure. Have you found any gold is probably the most popular question people ask us and many clearly think we are treasure hunters, no doubt influenced by certain films and media. However, this can't be farther from the truth. As scientists, our primary goal is to understand past human cultures through careful excavation and analysis, not to find gold or other valuable objects. To be honest, we get really excited about literally ancient garbage. There's even people who specialize in analyzing fossilized poo to gain information about ancient diets. Our second misconception is that archaeologists dig up dinosaurs. I can easily understand why people would easily confuse this, but the people who research and dig up dinos are called paleontologists. Archaeologists are focused on the study of the human past. Since dinosaurs aren't human, they generally fall outside our remit. Number three is that all archaeological sites are ancient whatever that means. While archaeology is often associated with ancient civilizations like the Egyptians, Mesopotamians, Greeks, Romans, etc., modern archaeologists also study relatively recent history, including 19th and 20th century sites, battlefields, and even urban ruins. You might ask why this needs to be done, especially since we have so many historical records from recent times. But even with that, there is still a lot that we don't know because it either wasn't written about or was lost. And that's not even to mention the fact that the historical record is often quite biased. <laughs> you might have heard the phrase, history was written by the victors. Yeah, we try to look for as full of an unbiased picture as possible. From studying colonial settlements to uncovering evidence of past wars, this helps us understand the social, political, and economic forces that shaped our modern world. Our fourth myth to debunk is that archaeology is always exciting and fun. Oh, I wish. <laughs> like any job or hobby or pursuit, archaeology has many tasks that are difficult, dirty, and sometimes less than exciting, but they still have to be done. You truly haven't experienced monotony and misery until you've had to excavate a bunch of post holes in clay soil in the middle of winter while it's freezing rain or windy. Trust me, I have done that. The work can also get boring and repetitive at times. You can even go through an entire site without actually finding anything exciting or of note. We do try to liven things up with having good chats, playing games like Two Minute Mysteries, Would You Rather, or on occasion, safely permitting, you can listen to music. Number five is that archaeologists only work in far away exotic locations. This is something that attracts a lot of people to the life of an archaeologist. The idea of traveling to far off places to find treasure and have adventures. We've already covered the treasure bit, but in terms of adventures, if you think about it, archaeology is done everywhere that humans have interacted with the environment. Excavations can happen in familiar environments to you, such as under city streets or in local parks, not just in distant deserts or jungles. It could be happening just around the corner from wherever you live. So if you think that you can't participate in a dig because you can't afford to travel to one, you might just be in luck because chances are there are digs available much more local to you that are looking for volunteers. You can check out my video about volunteering in archaeology to learn more about how you can find one of these digs and potentially participate. Just remember that wherever humans have been, there could be archaeology. So that covers a lot of places all over the world. Number six is that there is a finite amount of archaeology or that all the cool stuff has already been found. And this is not true at all. 
To put it in perspective, consider this. The Giza Plateau, which hosts the pyramids of Khufu, Khafra, Menkaura, and the Sphinx, as well as 6,000 other graves, pyramid towns, harbors, quarries, etc., is probably the most excavated site on Earth. Archaeologists have been working there quite consistently for over 100 years, and yet it is still not fully excavated. It's still generating headline-worthy discoveries pretty regularly every year. Another example would be Pompeii. It's been excavated for almost 250 years, and there is still a third of it underground. It's also worth noting that even if a site has been subject to excavation, new technology and techniques that are constantly being developed allow us to go back and uncover new information about sites. So if you're worried that by the time that you're ready to dig, there won't be anything left, not to worry. There is plenty of archaeology to go around. Funding and storage space, on the other hand, not so much. Our seventh misconception is that everything found during an excavation is valuable and kept and stored away somewhere after it's been excavated. I'm sorry to burst the bubble, but not everything recovered from an archaeological site is valuable, both in a monetary and archaeological sense. The vast majority of what we find are common objects, like pottery sherds or lithic debris, which are called flakes or debitage. And these provide everyday insights into past life, which are very valuable to archaeologists. This can actually be more important information for archaeologists than rare items like fancy gold and shiny things. Additionally, it's not possible to keep and store everything found during a dig. See my comment about funding and storage space. Often, either in the field or afterward during our analysis, we will determine what should be kept because it can give us some information that we need or not. If it doesn't, chances are it will be discarded, either back on the side of the site or put in a teaching and handling collection, or sometimes it's just dumped. Number eight is that archaeology only uses traditional excavation tools like brushes and trowels and everything is done very delicately. While these are part of every archaeologist toolkit, you will more often find us with a mattock, a pick, or shovel to hand because we need to move a lot of dirt and do it quickly since we're often working to a deadline. Trowels and brushes tend to only come out for the TV cameras. Also, nowadays you will find us using a variety of high-tech equipment like digital cameras, ground penetrating radar, drones, and digital mapping systems to assist in excavation and analysis. This helps make our work faster and more accurate. Number nine, one of my favorites and one that I come across a lot is that archeologists can just look at an object and instantly know what it is. This happens so much. People will pull out an object or a photo when you speak to them and you tell them you're an archeologist or they may be posted on an online forum, and they ask people to identify and date it on site with giving us very, very little information besides the image. Beyond the basics, identification is quite a difficult process. I might be able to say something is a piece of pottery or a stone tool, but it would take a proper fine specialist to say more about it. Not to mention that objects change from culture to culture and throughout time. Becoming familiar with objects from the region where you work is quite common. For example, having lived and worked in the UK, I can broadly identify a lot of the pottery from here. But if you were to show me pottery from China, I wouldn't be able to say anything about it. It's kind of like asking an ear, nose and throat surgeon to diagnose something that's wrong with your foot. Number 10 is that archeological sites get excavated completely. Everything goes down to bedrock. This is a misconception I've seen floating around the internet a lot lately, and it's being used by some pseudo-archaeology influencers to try and portray actual archaeologists as negligent or deliberately sabotaging sites, which is so infuriating because <laughs> it is the exact opposite. This perception arises from a total misunderstanding of how big archaeological sites are and what it would logistically cost to 100% excavate a site. As I already mentioned, you just have to look at Giza or Pompeii as examples. It's not like they never have to worry about funding. They're two of the most popular and well-known sites from around the world. 100%ing a site is not something that is done regularly. And it's not because we don't want to, but simply it would take too much time and money. 
For example, in the UK, commercial archaeological sites that are excavated in advance of construction projects, which is a whole part of the planning and building system, are often only 10% excavated. Now, this might seem like it's really small and it runs the risk of missing potential discoveries, but this really generally isn't the case. Using this system has meant that archaeologists have had to hone our craft and abilities to be able to pinpoint the parts of a site that are most likely to yield valuable archaeological information. This ties into the idea that not everything that we find is something that can contribute to our knowledge of a site. I suppose you could liken it to being able to find the X that marks the treasure spot on the map without actually even having the map. That way, we're still recovering enough data to write our reports, do analysis, and our due diligence on a site. In other cases, we might deliberately decide to leave something for later archaeologists with more advanced methods to do because we just don't have the technology at the moment. I can't tell you how much we wish earlier archaeologists would have done that. Can you imagine how much more we would know about places like Troy or Mycenae or even the inside of the pyramids if they had been found and first looked at using proper modern techniques instead of by people using dynamite or only looking for treasure to port slash to prove that the Iliad it actually happened? If that's how we feel about archaeologists from like a hundred and so years ago, just imagine how archaeologists a hundred years from now will feel about us. I also want you to keep in mind that archaeology is a destructive science. Once we excavate something, we cannot go back or undo it. In some cases, it's simply better for the preservation of a site to leave it in situ. So next time you see people on social media getting up in arms about sites only being five or 10% excavated, please remember this video before you let them rage bait you into harassing archaeologists who are just trying to do their job to the best of their ability at the end of the day. I promise you, nobody cares more about archaeology being done properly than archaeologists. We invest a lot of our time and money into learning how to do our job. There's there really isn't a reason for us to not then do it properly. Now, I know I said I only had 10 misceptions, but this last one leads into my bonus 11th one, which is one of the biggest headaches archaeologists have to deal with. The myth that we are hiding the truth about the past. Oh, this drives me crazy. <laughs> Why? Well, because the entire motivation behind archaeological projects is to research and then share our results with our peers and the public through publishing our work. It can take a long time sometimes, I know, it's not exactly the fastest process, but we get there eventually. Archaeology is done for the benefit of public knowledge. Logically then, why would we hide the results? I will admit that our results haven't always been easy to find or read, but this is something that's really changing. This is why I created my archaeology news series, shameless plug, so that I can spread the word of discoveries that are being made all the time in case your newsfeed didn't feel like putting it in front of you because the headline isn't snappy enough for the algorithm. So many archaeological research papers and reports are available to read for free on the internet. You just have to know where to look and Inside Archaeology is here to help you find it. You just have to know where to look and Inside Archaeology is here to help you find it. This is all not to mention the fact that to get all archaeologists everywhere to agree to do the same thing, like hiding evidence of past advanced civilizations or aliens, is impossible. If it was really a hoax, you'd expect there to be at least one credible archaeologist speaking out, and that just isn't the case. And being an externalist who sold some books or someone with a large internet following who just asked questions doesn't make you credible. Like, I cannot stress that enough. <laughs> Archaeologists ask questions all the time. The difference is that we also actively seek to answer them through our digs and other research. So next time you think about archaeology, remember, it's not just about treasure hunting or ancient tombs. It's a science that brings us closer to understanding our past and how it shapes the present. Okay, time to pack up our tools, folks. That's everything for today. What new information did you learn? Are there any misconceptions that I missed? Let me know down below. Don't forget to comment, share, like the video, or subscribe to the channel before you leave. If you're feeling extra generous, you can give me a super thanks, a Kofi donation, or have a look at my Redbubble shop and get a piece of merch with your favorite archaeology slogan on it designed by me, such as this one that I'm currently wearing that just came out last month.
Taking a few seconds to support me in any way you can helps to grow the channel and promotes quality heritage content that is well sourced, researched, and presented by somebody who is an expert in this subject. Thank you so much for watching, stay curious, and I hope to see you on my next adventure inside archaeology.